Welcome back to America's Boating Club sale course. In this section, we're, we're starting a new section on forces. Um, in this case, we will be covering the things that make the boat move. If we have engineers in the class, they can probably explain a lot of the stuff in this next section a lot better than I have. In fact, I, I, I probably sailed for 20 or 30 years before I really gave much thought to some of these theoretical concepts. And they really don't affect how much fun we can have out when we're out sailing. But they do give us a point for trying to understand what goes on the boat that makes it do the things we do uh, when we're out sailing. The first concept we're going to talk about is the center of gravity. The center of gravity is the, is the point through which all the forces of gravity acts, and it's pulling in a downward direction. The center of gravity will is, is a combined point that will balance the boat on any plane. If we were to suspend a boat from a cable that's attached to the center of gravity, it would stay in equilibrium no matter what point of, of direction that the, the, the set forces are act, acting upon. On my Capri, the center of gravity is right above the right behind the mast, about two feet, uh, right above the keel. On my thistle, it's about eight inches back of the grating, right over the centerboard trunk and where the centerboard is. Finally, the centerboard, center of gravity doesn't change so long as we don't move anything around on the boat, move weight from one place to the other. The center of gravity is always in the same place. Let's start this slide by talking about Archimedes' principle, which says that the, the boat displaces water equal to the weight of the boat. So the center of buoyancy is the center of gravity of the water that was displaced by a floating boat. As the water changes shape, the center of buoyancy also moves. Let's look at how the center of buoyancy changes as the water shape changes because of the healing of the boat uh, in, the, in these examples. This first one, we've got a flat bottom boat. Our center of buoyancy is right here in the middle of the boat. And then as we heal the boat, that center of buoyancy moves off to the side. You look at the area of the water, the water that's displaced. And so the center of gravity of that displaced area, that water, is now this new center of buoyancy. Similarly, we've got a sailboat shape down here. The center of buoyancy is in the middle of this. We heal the boat a little bit. The center of buoyancy moves over a little bit. We heal the boat a lot. The center of buoyancy moves over even further. In this slide, we're going to illustrate the effects, the center of gravity and center of buoyancy. If you... The boat on the left We've got the center of gravity, yes, that's represented by the red dot. And that's the, that's the point in the center of gravity for the boat. Down below, we've got the green dot, that represents the center of buoyancy. The center, so this is the center of gravity, center of buoyancy is the center of gravity of the water that's displaced by it. When the boats are in equilibrium, the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy are, are equal and opposite direction and they align vertically, up and down, vertically. When the boats are not in equilibrium, as in this picture over here, there, the center of gravity and the center of buoyancies are not aligned vertically, and, and it cre creates a riding moment that tends to push the boat back to limit, in equilibrium. This riding moment is equal to the distance between the two forces, the center of gravity and the center of effort. So this riding arm creates a, creates a push to try and put, put the boat back into an equilibrium state. The strength of the riding moment is determined by the distance the center of buoyancy has moved from the center of gravity plane. The distance between the center of gravity plane and the center of buoyancy plane is called a riding arm. 
The strength of the riding moment is dependent upon the length of the riding arm, the lever arm, times the, the distance that it, the, that it travels. One of the few formulas I remember from my days in the physics is that the, the strength is equal to the force times the distance. This is a practical example of why we care about center of balance and center of gravity uh, and how it's affected by water in the bottom of the boat. In this example, this is the center of gravity line right here. And it is fixed as long as nothing moves on the boat. This boat over here has water in the bilge, and it has an effect on the center of gravity. When the boat is healed, the center of gravity moves over to the to the right direction of the water, because that's how you know the center of gravity of the water displaced is is affects it, the center of buoyancy. So we have the center of buoyancy is in the same spot in both of these boats <coughs> because they're healed the same. Now let's look at the difference between the riding hour, which is the force that's going to try and push them back into equilibrium. On this boat, the riding arm is longer because the, it's the distance between these two, the center of buoyancy and the center of gravity. That's our riding arm, which then creates the riding moment force. Over here, because the center of gravity has moved over because of the, the, the change in center of gravity, our riding arm is much less. What that does, it's the, it reduces the implication, you know, the impact that the center of the, the riding moment has to bring the boat back into equilibrium. The net effect of this is the shorter, smaller riding moment is more likely to capsize in heavy weather. In addition, this splashing around boat water down in the bottom of the boat changes the stability of the boat. It, it really decreases the ability of the boat. Uh, a few years ago, I, I swamped the, my thistle and took on 100 gallons or so of water in the bottom of the boat. And it was during a race, so we were trying to get back into competition as quickly as we could. And so as we were, you know, so we, after we got enough boat water out so that we could sail it, we just sailed the, with the water in the bottom of the boat, having the crew bail it out. And what happened was, is the boat was totally unstable. Any motion, one side or the other, would cause it to just rock back and forth. And it behaved in a very, you know, you know, the stability was just greatly affected by it all. In this example, we've got a boat with a very high center of gravity. It's a power boat, for, in other words. In this example down here, the center of buoyancy and center of gravity are, are in line, and so the boat is at equilibrium. Now, we, you know, the, there's a boat comes by, and we, we get a, wa a wave that causes the boat to, to heal a little bit. As the boat heals, we, you know, we get the center of buoyancy shifts to our right, which then creates our lever arm down here. And this, this, this is the force that's going to tend to push the boat back into equilibrium. So if the boat only heals 20 degrees, the riding moment is going to push it back, back upright into uh, equilibrium. If it heals 30 degrees, now the center of gravity and center of buoyancy are equal again, and so there is no zero riding arm moment. And so at this point, the boat could go either way. It could either go back upright or, or have disaster results. If the boat heals 40 degrees, the center of gravity is now on the opposite side of the center of buoyancy, and it creates a negative riding arm and what's going to happen next is this boat is going to capsize. Hull design factors affect the stability of the boat. A deep drafted boat with, with ballasts located low in the hull will result in a stiffer boat. It won't rock around as much. 
Some of the design factors are hull stability, that affects the hull stability are size, the beam, the draft, the weight, the hull form, and the balance. We look at the, if we look at the size of the boat, moving from a 40-foot boat to a 50-foot boat, the riding moment doubles for each degree of heel that you would experience. And if you increase the, the beam, that in, increases the length of the riding arm. However, when you increase the beam, it also increases the wetted surface underwater, which increases the hull friction resistance, which slows the boat down. So there's a compromise to be made. The draft, deep drafted boats carry the ballast lower, which increases the riding arm. This also allows for higher aspect sails and better upwind performance. The deeper draft, however, increases the wetted surface, which also then increases hull friction, which slows the boats down. Weight's also a factor in that the riding moment is directly proportional to the weight. The greater the weight has greater wetted surface, and which also re increases our, our water friction uh, resistance. The hull form has an effect on, on how the lever arm moves based upon its characteristic and reducing the amount of healing that goes on. So the more it heals, it moves the center of buoyancy to leeward, creating a larger lever arm, or not. Hull form is when it has the greatest effect on stability. Stability is the resistance of a boat to a small amount of lateral tilting from its equilibrium. The ultimate stability is a boat's ability to resist capsizing. Now we're gonna look at the, the difference in stability of a John boat versus a canoe or a kayak uh, to see how that the, the hull shape has an effect on things. So if you think about it, uh, the, the John boat, flat bottom boat would have the greatest riding arm because the riding arm moves the furthest uh, as it, as it uh, heals and it has great initial stability. The V-bottom boat develops a shorter riding arm and has, a, has less initial stability than the, you know, a flat bottom boat. And if we go over to a round bottom boat, it has the shortest riding arm and the lowest initial stability. They add ballast to these boats to improve the ultimate stability. One of the factors that consider is for us practical people is to consider where where our fuel tanks and our water tanks might be on board and so the difference that changes the center of gravity and buoyancy when they're filled or when they're empty when I was racing on Lake Michigan we I was in a race from Chicago to Michigan City there's a straight line the winds were very steady so it was just really set your set your sails and go on a uh, starboard tack for the whole way. We were, uh, one of the boats we were competing with um, was, it took a little, you know, creative approach for dealing with their ballast and their center of gravity and center of buoyancy. And what they did was they filled the water tank only on the starboard side. So it shifted the center of gravity over to the starboard side a little bit, which then gave them a little larger riding arm uh, for the whole trip. They had to, you know, they had to change the water when they went back from Michigan City to Chicago be, to the other side to get the same effect going the other way. Let's look at how the hull design of a catamaran affects their stability. If you look at when the boat starts to is in, you know, flies a hull. The lever arm is between the center of buoyancy, which is just this little space over here, and the center of gravity, which is there. That's a, a wide, long lever arm, which causes it to, to be fairly stable until if the boat heels, flies a hull up near center, you know, you know, all the way up. Now your center of gravity, center of buoyancy lever arm is very small. And so there's not much resistance to keeping it from capsizing. 
as soon as the center board turtles or the, the catamaran turtles, the center of buoyancy and center of gravity are again in equilibrium, which makes it very hard to uh, get, the, get the boat back upright. And so you have to pull it all the way around in order to make that happen. Here's a video when the American Cup, America's Cup was sailing catamarans. It shows the power of the sails and the speed of the boats when things are going well and when they go badly. Additionally, in the very front of the video is a small optimist. Those, those are the kid boats that we have for our youth sailors. You can copy this link into, a, into your browser window on another tab uh, and see the video in full. Let's, let's look at how the, the wind pressure affects healing of a boat and, and its you know, ultimate desire. So in, in this example here, we've got the more the boat heals, the less power, the, the less area of the sail is exposed to the wind which then reduces our power. So if the boat only heals 10 degrees, we only lose 2% of the of the sails of the wind's power. If it heals 50 degrees, we've lost almost 40% of the sail of the wind power. In addition, the weight of the the mast and the sails and all the equipment are on the mast have an impact on 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 the stability also. So if we take what the, the weight of the mass and that stuff raises our center of gravity higher, which makes the boat a little less stable. If you think about the effect of a, a one ounce, a one ounce masthead fly at the top of a 32 foot mast, that's equal because of the leverage of the mast, that's equivalent to two pounds of force at the deck level. As we know, the, the center of gravity is at a fixed point that's been established at the design of the boat, whenever, you know, and it doesn't change unless something moves on the boat. One of the things we can do on a boat is we can, you know, the crew movement has an effect on the center of gravity. In this case here, if the crew were, you know, the crew moving out moves the center of gravity fairly substantially away from this, you know, the equilibrium point that was originally designed. In the example over here, the crew moved to the low side, which then reduced that riding moment uh, that keeps the boat upright. Let's look at the uh, vocabulary for this week, and then I'll show a short video that really illustrates these in a, in a better way than reading a, the line. The center of buoyancy is the center of gravity of the water displaced by a boat. Lever arm is the distance to which a force acts. Listing is a leaning of a boat to one side due to weight distribution. Riding arm is the horizontal distance between the vertical line through the center of buoyancy and the vertical line through the center of gravity. The riding moment is the riding arm multiplied by the yacht's displacement. Now let's look at a video that shows the the moment of a boat for you know listing, pitching, and rolling and yawing. In this in this animation, we can see the different types of boat motion that you can experience. Um, you can copy the link into a browser, pause the video, and copy the link into the browser to see it in full. This completes our section on stability. Our next section will be on boat balance.